Hello, everyone, and welcome. We are excited to have you here today for the Montana Post-Secondary Educational Opportunities Council Virtual College Fair. We are excited to, to have you for this session specifically. We have some fantastic schools here with us today. My name is Laura. I'm with StriveScan, and I'll be your facilitator. So before we get started and jump right in, just a couple of housekeeping items of note. So you probably have already noticed your camera and microphone are off, so your panelists cannot see or hear you. We still really want to hear from you, though, and want to hear your questions that are coming in. So use that Q&A button you should see on your screen to type your questions to our presenters at any time. So this can be school specific or it could be more broad questions that you have for everyone. Um, so again, you can drop those in at any point in time throughout the presentation. This presentation is being recorded and will be available at strivescan.com slash Montana virtual. It is the last session of this particular um, program. So uh, if you go to your schedule, you, you, you won't see any remaining, but you will be able to see all the recordings at this link for this one, as well as every other session from today. All right, that is everything on my end. So with that, I would like to turn it over to our very first institution that is going to be the University of Mary. Take it away. Hi, my name is Samantha. I'm from the University of Mary, and I am going to pull up a PowerPoint here real quick. I can find it. I am um, not seeing it. Um, but anyway, so I just want to talk about the school a little bit. So I'm from the University of Mary. We are found in Bismarck, North Dakota. Um, we are a Catholic Christian and Benedictine school. That is the basis of everything that we do. And kind of how that comes in is that's our foundation. We do strive to have a campus filled with community, hospitality, and service. Um, but we are only about 60% Catholic, and we do that on purpose in that we want people to know that even if you aren't Catholic or Christian, like you still have a place here. Um, so we do have, or the motto of the University of Mary is the University of Mary for Life. And so that is our motto because we believe that your higher education isn't just for your profession, but it is also for you as a person as well. And so we want to help for you, not only professionally, but personally. Um, and so we do that partially through, we have an 11 to one student to faculty ratio right now. Um, and we do also as a liberal arts school, we have 50 plus bachelor's degrees as well as master's and doctoral programs. We do offer undergraduate, graduate and online programs as well. So we do have five schools on campus. We have the Gary Thelson School of Business. Um, some unique things about them, we do have an investment club that they run through there. Um, and they do also have an opportunity where you can potentially graduate in 2.5 years and then four years with a master's or do the traditional four years for an undergraduate degree. We do also have the Lifford Family School of Education and Behavioral Sciences. So in there you would have your education, which we have elementary, early childhood, special education, secondary education, um, criminal justice, social work and counseling. Um, and so one thing to note for like criminal justice and social work is those are all taught by people who have been either police officers or social workers in the past. So they bring in a lot of um, personal stories and information that way. And our third school is a school of arts and sciences where um, something to note about that school is because we are a little art school, everyone will take some classes in there. Um, we do have over 90% of the faculty in that school have the highest degrees in their field, which is really awesome. We're really, we're really proud of that. Um, and one thing also to note is we are not a research facility or university. We are a teaching university, so they're solely focused on teaching you, not on their own research. Um, our fourth school is a school of engineering. So this is one of our newest schools. We've had it for about six years, I think, but we did just open a new building for this. And a unique thing about all uh, our engineering school is you can potentially get you out in four years with an engineering degree versus I know a lot of places are five years. And then our last school is our St. Gianna School of Health Sciences. And we do offer a wide variety of both undergraduate and master's and doctoral programs. We do have early insurance into, I think, almost all or all of those programs. And we are nationally known for our health sciences. So that's a popular one that we get questions about. Um, and another really unique thing we have here that not everyone knows about is we do have an option called year-round campus. So basically, if you would decide to participate in year-round campus, um, you would take a fall, spring, and summer semester for it's 2.6 years. So you would graduate 
spring of your junior year and you would actually get out of school faster. So we have a lot of people who will do that if they either just want to graduate sooner or if they want to go into one of those graduate programs, either here or somewhere else. We do also have 18 athletic sports teams. We are NCAA Division II, um, and there are potentials to get scholarships with those. And then the last thing I want to talk about is we do have study abroad opportunities. I know a lot of people um, like to know about those. So our main two is we do have a campus in Rome, so you can go there either for a fall semester or spring semester or for uh, the month of May. And we do also have a program where we can send you down to a campus we have down by Arizona State University. So it's kind of um, in coordination with Arizona State, or Arizona State University. So you could take classes from their campus or just from our campus and vice versa. And I think that's all I have for you. But yeah, so we are located in Bismarck, North And we love it when people come out to visit and see what we're all about. And that's all I have for you. I hope you guys have a great rest of your presentations. Thanks, Samantha. Appreciate it. Okay, and up next we have Dickinson State University. Hey everyone, my name is Stephanie Osborne and I am the Director of Admissions at Dickinson State. I am actually from Montana, from Forsyth, Montana. Uh, and I came to Dickinson State uh, about 10 years ago, uh, was a student here, graduated, obviously started working in admissions and have worked my way up to director. So I obviously love seeing Montana students come to Dickinson State. And so I do have a PowerPoint that I'm gonna go ahead and share. And Laura, if you can just let me know if you guys can see my screen once I get this going. Are you guys- It's good on my end, yep. Okay, perfect. All right, so we are located in Dickinson, North Dakota, um, about 70 miles over the border uh, from Montana. We are a smaller university, so we have about 1,400 students. So that means our average class sizes are gonna be smaller. You can see on the slide here that we have a 12 to one student to faculty ratio. So I would say most of the time your class sizes are gonna be around 20 to 25 students. Um, sometimes your general classes will get bigger than that, but most of the time you're looking at that 20 student mark and maybe less. Uh, we do have 70 plus academic programs and I'll talk a little bit more about those soon and then uh, we're a pretty flexible campus too, depending on your degree. So um, a lot of our classes can be taken on campus, online, at one of our other campus locations, and then using DSU Live, which is our new, um, where you attend the class at that time, but you are attending class virtually and you're logged in during the time of the class. So like I said, we have more than 70 academic programs, so they're all listed out here for you. So plenty of information on this slide, um, but we have uh, nine different academic departments. So you can see ag, um, arts and letters, business, education, health and physical ed, math, computer science, natural science, nursing, and social science. Um, we have a lot of different bachelor's programs, as you can see, and then we are also a dual mission university. And what that means is we offer everything from some of your trade and tech degrees all the way through master's degrees. So we are, because we're the only four-year university in our part of the state, we offer programs in just about everything. Um, we have started offering like welding is one of our newest programs. We are looking to introduce a few more programs like diesel and fire science, um, but we're a really strong business school. We started out as a teaching college. So teaching is kind of our bread and butter, um, very strong nursing program. Um, I was a business student at DSU, but we really do have a lot of different programs for you guys to choose from. Um, so everything from your one year certificates through all the way through master's degrees, which you're obviously not thinking about yet, but eventually. Um, so if you have any questions about any of the programs, definitely go check out our website or let me know in the Q&A. Um, and then as Montana students, you guys would pay in-state tuition. So you can see the breakdown here. So uh, this cost, we are a per credit cost system. And so this is giving you um, a total cost of what you'd be looking at for a full year if you took 15 credits a semester and you lived on campus. So you're looking at about that 16,600. 
um, and you guys do pay the in-state tuition. And uh, we have frozen our tuition rates through the summer of 2023, so prices aren't going to be going up for a while either. So we're definitely an affordable option for Montana students. Uh, I have a slide here kind of talking about our DSU athletic team. So we have lots of different sports on campus. You can see um, baseball, softball, basketball, cross country, golf, wrestling, volleyball, competitive cheerleading, um, esports and competitive cheerleading are our newest sports on campus. So if you're interested in doing athletics, definitely reach out to the coaches at DSU and we'd love to have you. And then this slide here um, just tells you a little bit more about student life. So lots of clubs and organizations that you guys can join. We love it when our students get involved on campus. We have actually recently um, brought the student ambassador program back to Dickinson State. So we have a group of 17 awesome students, um, actually a few of them from Montana that are kind of helping us with event ideas and promoting things on social media and helping us give campus tours. So we're really excited about that. So get involved when you come to campus. Um, and then I also have um, a picture here about some of our support services. So like I said, we're a smaller university. So what we really do well is we offer you extra support. Um, we can give you a lot of one-on-one -on -one attention. That's what we're here for is we wanna make sure that you succeed. So we have career services, um, disability services, we have testing, tutoring, um, and all of the services are free for you guys as students. So definitely take advantage of those if you become DSU students. And then I have just a slide here about coming to visit us. So the best way to figure out if we're gonna be the right fit for you is to come check out campus. So you can visit us um, anytime you want, Monday through Friday, we have campus visits 9 a.m. starting at 9 a.m. or 1 p.m. Uh, we have this Discover DSU days. Um, those are bigger group visits. We do draw for a scholarship at each of those events. Um, and then you can visit with groups. We have a virtual tour. So all of the options for visiting campus can be found at this link here. So dickinsonstate.edu slash admission slash visit campus. So come, come see us. And then just a slide here, if you uh, want to become a Blue Hawk, then definitely do your application. If you have any questions, let the admissions team know and we will walk you through that process. But we would love to have you as DSU students. Um, but yeah, that's all I have. So I'll go ahead and stop sharing and send it over. Awesome. Thanks, Stephanie. Okay, up next we have Minot State University. All right. Hi, I'm Brett from Minot State University. I'm the admissions counselor to um, the Western side of the United States. I will be your admissions counselor. So if you ever contact Minot State, you'll be going through me. Um, and let's get into this, all right? Um, if it lets me click. There we go. Anyways, um, so Minot is right up there, up in Northern North Dakota. That's where Minot State University is, if you didn't know that. Um, it's a quick drive from Montana. I made that trip earlier and it's a beautiful drive. So you don't have to worry about getting bored on the drive. And it's far enough where you can be your own person, but it's not too far where you can't go home. So you got that going for you. This is our campus. It is literally like a block in size. Um, even though it seems very small, when you look at it in a picture like this, there's a lot of opportunities going on on campus. You can even visit. I left a little QR code right there in the picture if you want to take that. But um, I'll get into why this university, even though it's smaller in size, um, has a lot of opportunities for you as a student. So when it comes to majors, there's over 100 plus majors at Minot State University, um, from art to business to social sciences to pre-medical to so many other areas. Um, so pretty much almost whatever you want, except a few, usually if you wanna go into the trades, um, you might have to check out a different university, but we have a lot of sciences that you can check out as well. So a lot of opportunities, but the top ones are nursing, biology, elementary education, management and communication disorders are the uh, top majors that people usually go into. Um, there's people spread across the board for all the other majors, but that's what usually people come to us for. Um, when it comes to keys to success, we have a lot of opportunities on campus that you can use. We have uh, things like tutoring, 
Writing Center and Career Services. Um, career Services you can use whether you're a freshman or a senior. Um, let's say you're trying to go into retail, Career Services will be there for you. All of these um, opportunities on campus are for free. So you can easily just use the Writing Center and not have to pay us anything um, that's covered in your fees. Um, for stuff to do on campus, um, we have over a thousand plus uh, events going on provided by MSU Life. Uh, whether you like intramurals or clubs or events, you can join any of those. And then with the events, it goes from planting your own succulent to this thing called 500 Ways to Win. They have a bunch of ping pong balls from the ceiling. They fall and then everybody just goes chasing after it. And then they grab a ping pong ball and they win a prize. Um, there's also bingo is a big one as well. It gets very intense with college students. So it's a lot of fun. Um, if you're not into all those, or maybe you are, but we also have a lot of sports. We are NCAA D2, um, but we also have a few clubs such as hockey. That's going to be a club and women's wrestling, which is also uh, not NCAA affiliated. But you'll also see that I did say women's wrestling. It's not on my little list here. It's very recent, but we have women's wrestling as well as all of these if you're interested in them. And it, like I said, there are intramurals, so you can be part of like intramural bowling as well. Um, for the admission requirements, you need a 2.75 GPA, high school core, and statement of intent. We don't require a uh, ACT, SAT score. We just recommend it. I'll get into why we recommend it in a bit. Um, for the admission checklist, this is all you need to do when you're applying. Um, complete the application. Um, in the month of November, that $35 application fee is not going to be there. You don't have to spend anything in the month of November. So if you want to just apply for free to Minot State, you can do that in November. Uh, we need an in-progress high school transcript. Um, when you graduate, we need an official high school transcript from your high school. Uh, we recommend the official test results and um, final college transcript. So if you took AP or dual credit classes, just send those into us um, as well. Um, for financial aid and tuition, um, tuition, it's like uh, about 8,000 for uh, rooms and meals is so over, it's like 7,300. And um, there's a lot of opportunities to bring that number down. Um, but this is an academic year, not per semester. So it's about $15,000 per academic year. Um, this is one of the opportunities you can use to bring down that price. Uh, the academic four year award, you just uh, send in your ACT score. That's why I recommend it, or SAT score. And with your GPA that you sent in with your transcripts, you'll automatically get this if you qualify to any of those. So you can gain that amount of money if you just send in your uh, items. I also provide the uh, scholarships as well. The due date for the scholarships are uh, February 15th. So the sooner you apply and get accepted, you can um, go for those scholarships sooner. If you have any questions at all, you can easily contact me with this. I will send it in the chat as well, my contact information. But then again, I'm Brett Holubichuk. If you ever need anything, remember to contact me. All right. Thanks. Thanks, Brett. Okay. <clears throat> Excuse me. And up next, we have North Dakota State University. All right. One second as I get the correct screen sharing. Perfect. So hi, everyone. My name is Jade. I'm an admission representative for North Dakota State University. Um, full disclosure, I am also an intern. I'm in my senior year here. I study psychology. It's pretty exciting. Um, but all of you guys, as students, will have an admission counselor, which is a full-time staff member here. Um, to get into a quick overview of NDSU, we're a four-year public D1 university. Um, we have all the sports. You probably know us for our football team. And we are a mid-sized campus. We have about 1,200, 500 students. That includes our graduate and undergraduate. So it's a little bit closer to 11,000 for our undergrad population. And we are located in Fargo, North Dakota, which is right along the North Dakota, Minnesota border, far east side of the state. Um, a little overview of our academics. We have over 100 majors that you can choose from, um, broken into seven colleges. We have a College of Egg, a College of business, a college of engineering, a college of arts and social sciences, 
health professions, human sciences and education, and then science and math. Um, and what I think is super impressive about NDSU is despite our size, we have a 16 to one student to faculty ratio. So you do get to know your professors despite the fact that campus is mid-sized. And we have a lot of opportunities for hands-on learning. This is if uh, the photo here is food science. So they examine different types of grains and bread um, and the porousness of it. It's very above my knowledge, but I get a lot of opportunities like that for psychology. Beyond academics, we do have a lot of student activities. So there are over 300 student clubs and orgs you can get involved in. We have Greek life, we have academic-based, faith-based, cultural-based. You can think of it, we probably have it. We do have a unicycling club. It is my favorite club. I'm not a part of it. Um, and then included in your student fees, you will have access to all of our arts and athletics events. So D1 um, events are free to attend. Our performing arts events are free to attend. And then also in your student fees, you have access to our wellness center, which does have a rock climbing wall, an aquatic center, center um, indoor basketball courts, an indoor soccer field, some racquetball courts, group fit classes, and just your traditional um, weights and cardio equipment. Um, I'm assuming not many of you have been to the Fargo-Moorhead community because we're very east, but just to give you an overview of that, um, Fargo-Moorhead has a population of about 240,000 people, um, and we do have a really good downtown scene. We have a lot of local shops and restaurants. I'm a big foodie, and my favorite fact about Fargo is that we have the largest number of restaurants per capita in the nation, which is not something you would anticipate. Um, and we also have a lot of recreational opportunities through parks and trails um, at the Red River. There's one of our parks that has a canoe docking station if you wanted to canoe up the river or down the river, up to you. Um, but if all of this sounds fantastic, um, I will show you our cost and then how to apply to NDSU. So this is our um, cost of attendance. You guys would follow the Montana resident um, line there. So tuition, that is going to be everything in the class. These is stuff I've already mentioned. So games, the wellness center, um, but also stuff like our writing services, our tutoring services, the counseling center, the more stuff you go to and utilize with these, the bigger bang for the buck that you get. And then room and board, this is made up of a five or seven day meal plan and then a traditional low rise residence hall. Um, room and board can vary depending on what meal plan you choose and where you live. Um, for meal plans, you have the option between a five day, Monday through Friday, or a seven day, which includes the weekends. Both are unlimited, so you could eat 20 times a day if you really wanted to. Um, and then if you wanted to live in a traditional low rise or a high rise, it cost different. So that gives you your total cost for the academic year. So this includes spring and some, uh, spring and fall semester. So about $10,000 there. Um, I will include in the uh, chat box a link to our scholarships because we have quite a lot. We have some guaranteed ones based on academic performance. We have some named scholarships um, and then other opportunities as well. Otherwise, applying is pretty easy to NDSU. You just have to go to NDSU edu slash apply. Um, we are not having an ACT SAT requirement. Um, for our guaranteed scholarships, we have a model that's just based off of GPA, but then we have another model that's based off of GPA and test score in case that would benefit you more. Um, we do look for a 2.75 cumulative unweighted high school GPA and 14 core classes. So those are four of English, three of math, three of social science, three of a lab science, and a world language. If you haven't taken a world language, so I'm going to make up that one credit in any of the other four. We also don't require any transcripts to be sent to us. We are self-reported. So the only time we'll ask for them is if we might need them to factor into a decision if you don't meet one of our guidelines. And then also once you graduate, we'll need official transcripts, both your high school and then if you've taken AP or college coursework. We also have an application fee. It is completely free to apply to NDSU at any point in time. You don't have to worry about having a credit card on hand for anything like that. If you're interested in coming and taking a closer look at us, you can. You just have to go to ndsu.edu slash visit. We do offer in-person visits. We do routinely daily visits Monday through Friday, starting on the hour from 1 going or from 9 a.m. going until 1 p.m. Um, and then we also have some larger events, some Saturday visits for academic interest, and we do have virtual options as well. That is everything from me. If you have any questions, feel free to include them in the chat. Um, thanks. Wonderful. Thanks, Jade.
All right, so before we start with our last institution of Gillette College, just want to give a quick plug. Don't forget that you can use that Q&A button if you'd like to ask some questions of any of our schools that we've heard from so far. All right, and then with that, I'll take it or send it over to Gillette College. Hi guys, my name is Shannon Henshaw and I am the Director of um, Enrollment Services here at Gillette College. So I was just going to share my screen with you and run through a little presentation. Um, I just wanted to make sure it's on the right screen. You guys can see it, right? Yeah. You can see it. It is in the um, like initial view mode versus presentation mode. Okay. I mean, sorry. I think it shared my wrong screen. I apologize. Take your time. There we go. Perfect. Um, so to start, we are, I was going to start with kind of where we're located because we are an out-of-state school and unlike the other schools that are in here, we are a two-year school. Um, so we are located in northeastern Wyoming. Um, we have some really great natural landmarks close to us. We're close to Keeble State Park, the Bighorn Mountains, Devil's Tower, and the Black Hills. Um, as I mentioned, we are a two-year school, so we do have some transfer programs, but we do also have um, some career and technical education programs. And we are what they consider a comprehensive community college. So we are not just a commuter campus. We do have on-campus housing, student clubs and activities, basically all the things you'd find at a big four-year school, just in a smaller environment. Um, so some fast facts about us. We were voted the fifth best community college in the nation last year. We have a 13 to one student to faculty ratio. Um, all of our classrooms have a cap of 25 students, so you would never have more students than that in the classroom. 85% of our students receive some sort of financial aid or scholarship. Um, this is a little map of where our students come from. So you can see we have students from all across the U.S. and especially here in Montana. And then this is a little snapshot of what our tuition and fees are for Montana residents. You guys qualify as a GUI student, and this is also for a full year. Not on here um, is our student population. So we have just under 2000 students here on our campus. For our career and technical education programs, we've got four of them. We've got welding, uh, industrial electric, diesel, and machine tool. All of our career and technical education programs have a one year certificate option that does not require any English, math, or other general education. And then a two year degree option. Um, just some little facts down here, 95% of our CTE students had a job secured before they graduated, and also 95% of our students participate in a co-op or some sort of internship opportunity while they're in school with us. Um, as far as arts and sciences programs, um, this is a listing of what we have for those. Most of these are what we consider transfer programs. Um, there's a pretty wide range in here, everything from ag to engineering, psychology, social science, education, just kind of depending where your interest area is. And then we also have health science and human performance. This range, or ranges from one semester options like CNA and medical assistant all the way up to nursing and pre-professional. Pre-professional is for any students that are looking at graduate level programs, whether it's pre-med, pre-dentistry, chiropractic, anything like that. Um, and there's just a little statistic on there about our nursing program. 97% of our students pass the NCLEX on their first try. As I mentioned, quite a few of our programs in arts and science and health and human performance are transfer programs. So this is a listing of the universities that we have transfer agreements with. Um, beyond this, we transfer students all over the place, Oregon, Florida, and in between. These are just universities where they guarantee you'll, they'll take all of your credits. As I mentioned, we do have on-campus housing. Our on-campus housing is all apartment style, so it has a full kitchen and living room in it. Because it comes with a full kitchen, we do not require that students have a meal plan to live on campus. I know some students really enjoy not having to do or the cafeteria meals. Um, it also includes free laundry, and then there's a study room included in every suite. Next to our campus housing, we also have our Pronghorn Center. So this is the home of our campus life and housing office. It has a full basketball court that we use for intramurals. They do basketball, kickball, volleyball, dodgeball, pretty much anything you can think of. It also has a track around it, and then it has a beautiful fitness center that is open to all of our students. 
as I mentioned, our campus life and housing, they're kind of their fun havers on campus. Um, so they organize over 200 free campus events each year for students. They've always got something going on, um, everything from like slip and slides to zip lines and in between. Um, they're always doing something fun. We also have some great student support services to help you academically. Um, everything from tutoring, library resources, counseling, um, disability services, and then we also have a designated veterans advisor for anyone that may be utilizing guard benefits or maybe has parent um, veteran benefits that they're going to use while they're in school with us. We have some great scholarships available for students. Um, although we are affordable, we try and make it as affordable as possible for students. Our main academic scholarship is this ACT one. So if you earn a 25 or higher on your ACT, you earn free in-state tuition and fees. Um, there's no GPA requirement on this. It's just based on your ACT score. And then beyond that, we have institutional and foundational scholarships available. We use one application for all of our scholarships. So you just fill that out and it'll put you in for everything you qualify for. Uh, we award over a million dollars in aid and scholarship each year. As far as athletics, we have one athletic team and that's our rodeo team. They compete in the NIRA in the Central Rocky Mountain region. Um, they've been super successful. They're typically the number one or number two team in our region. Um, they have these beautiful facilities and these are some of our students that have recently gone to the college finals. Um, all of our rodeo teams are on, or all of our rodeo athletes are on scholarship. Um, so there's some great opportunities there if that's an interest you have. Um, and then lastly, uh, we appreciate that you jumped on here to learn about us virtually, but we'd really love to have you guys on campus if you can make it. Um, we do have a virtual tour on our website, but for in-person, we do tours Monday through Friday. Um, they're individual, so you can just contact us and we can set you up with morning or afternoon tour. And then we have a group visit coming up next month on the 19th. We call it Pronghorn Preview. It's hands on. It's a chance for you to get here, meet some current students, meet our faculty, get in the classroom. Um, and lunch is provided. And then we've got contact information here. If you have any questions, please feel free to reach out to us. Thanks, Shannon. Okay, so now we will move into some panel discussion. So I have some questions that I am going to um, throw back to our institutions here to give their take on. And I would ask that we just go in the order that we presented. Um, so we'll just start from the top and work our way down. So the first question I have is, what's one thing you want students to remember about your school in particular? That's a really good question. So I think one thing I would want them to remember about our school is that we really enjoy you being here and we have a really great community and we love for people to I think that would be what I would say to that. Um, DSU, I think the thing that like really kind of sets us apart is the just the family feel around here. And I mean, you're going to get that, you know, if you find the right place for you. But definitely at Dickinson, like that's what we go for is we want you to feel like part of the family as soon as you get here. Um, yeah, the smaller school. That's what we do well. um just to make sure um kind of a little choppy what what was your question <laughs> sorry about that brett yep so question was what is one thing that you would like to have students remember about your school if you could just pick one well i guess dickinson kind of stole mine uh we have a bunch of international <laughs> we had a bunch of international students uh from around the world uh from like europe east asia africa and even though we're in northern North Dakota, like middle, it's not the middle of nowhere, but like you want to expect that diversity, you think of that New York City. And so it kind of gives that feel of like this whole world in one little community instead of being shoved into this whole world in a giant community. So we give that type of opportunity to students in a more palpable, palatable uh, area than huge city. 
I would say our community aspect. Um, we have a lot of students, we have a big population, but just you can go basically anywhere in the world and someone's gonna be like, NDSU, I know that place, go bison. I had a friend who did a study abroad trip to Germany and he just ran into a random bison fan and they talked their ear off for 30 minutes. So you'll definitely get good connections. You'll definitely get a lot of opportunities and definitely get in here if you choose to attend. Uh, the one thing that I'd want students to remember about us is kind of our tagline from the front of our view book, if you have it, and that's more than your degree. So our big thing with um, being a community college is that we are focused from the first time you come in here and meet with an advisor about your whole picture, like what do you have going on outside of school, what support do you need, but then also what are your long-term goals, what do we need to be looking at while you're in school here to either help you make the transfer that you want to make or land the job that you want after you finish with us. That's great, great um, advice and tips there. So another question, what is one myth that you'd like to debunk on the college admissions process? And this doesn't have to be a myth about your specific college admissions process at your institution, but just in general. I don't actually know what to say to that. Uh, it's a, the, completely okay to pass too, if you'd like yeah. to pass. <laughs> um, I think the admissions process is easier than people think that it is. I think that's what I would say. I think I would say that I've met some students that maybe don't have the best grades and they're like, oh, college is out of reach for me. And I wouldn't say that's the case. Like maybe college is out of reach like for Harvard, but like you can go to college. So don't stress out that your GPA is not that great. Like there's a place for you. You'll find that school. There's, I mean, if nothing else, there's community college, you know, like that you don't, they don't typically have admissions requirements. So don't, don't count college out, even if anybody has told you that. Like, I know that I heard from some students that their counselor kind of told them like, yep, you're not cut out for college. And I was really mad about it. So there's always going to be, there's going to be a place for you and there's going to be a program for you. And if that's in college, great. If it's doing something else, that's great too. Oh, I actually really like that answer. Um, I like to say, um, apply to multiple places. Um, don't just have this one dream place and just apply to that one because on the off chance, I'm not going to say that you won't, but on the off chance you don't get accepted, you had this high hopes and then you're like, oh, college isn't for me. Well, like um, what you said earlier is that no, college is for everyone and the ability is for everyone. And it's, a lot of us have free applications or affordable, just send in, um, you know, still go your top one. Don't, don't let me dissuade you, but just go and um, have a backup plan. Worst case scenario, I'm not saying anything. If you really want to go to Harvard, go to Harvard, but worst case scenario, just apply to wherever you can. Yeah, to echo off of that, I think a lot of people assume college reps and admission counselors are here to get you to the college. And while that's part of our job, we want you to go where it's going to be a best fit for you. I've worked with a lot of students where they really want to do one thing, and I'm like, this isn't a great option for you here. You should really look elsewhere, and I help them through that. Like, we just want you to be successful in life, period. <laughs> I think to kind of build off what everyone would say, I would just say, I think a lot of students go into their senior year and think, oh my gosh, college prep is so stressful. Application process is so stressful. Um, and I would kind of say, take all these advice, apply to multiple schools, go visit them, find that fit that you really like. Um, like Jade said, like, I know we can be a little intimidating sometimes, but we're here to help you. We're always going to be honest. We want you to find the place that feels right. So we're gonna answer your questions and be honest if we're not the right place for you. So I just, one of my coworkers always says um, the college application process is basically like dating. You should make each college wine you and dine you. So I would say, take that, like have some fun with it. Don't be so stressed out by the process. And like Brett said, try a couple colleges and you may have thought you only liked one, but when you go visit, you might like a couple more. Great, such great advice. So thank you all for sharing that. So with that, I am gonna go ahead and wrap us up for today. So
So again, just want to thank you all for joining us, both our attendees, as well as all of our fantastic institutions who were here on the call today. Um, so thank you again. Now, when you close this window or when I close us out, there will be a link to a very quick five question survey. So we'd really appreciate any feedback that you can provide so we can continue to offer programs like this. Um, and this is our last session for this program, um, but just want to let everyone know that recordings will all be available at strivescan.com slash Montana virtual. So for this one, as well as all the other ones, if you want to check out what else was going on while you were here. So with that, again, just one last thank you. I hope everyone has a fantastic rest of your day and a happy Halloween coming up. And I will um, wrap us up from here. Thank you.